Okay, our next speaker will be Eric Filio, uh, talking about how to bypass data exfiltration detection with malicious cryptography techniques. Eric. So, good morning. Thank you for being here. So, the talk is, uh, is different from what you may expect. It's more with programming and mathematics, but it's still hacking. And I would like to explain how to use the potential of uh, cryptography and mathematics in order to do to to evaluate the, the potential of some attacks and in this case how to exfiltrate uh, data in a very um, invisible way. So I was in, in the military for years and now I'm working um, more in research and development, trying to find solution. Uh, going from concepts to implementation. So, here's a summary of my talk. So, uh, the slides are rather detailed, so I will go through uh, quick for some of them, but I would, li uh, I would like to, to, uh, you to have a, a lot of details. So, first I will introduce um, the topic and present the state of the art. Uh, I will present uh, how to do uh, some sort of new malware of course, we do not implement malware, but just you, we want to e evaluate uh, how cryptography could uh, make malware evade uh, any form of analysis. Uh, so it is what I call non-trivial enabled cryptography. Then I will explain how to modify or to mimic any kind of uh, innocent looking entropy and statistical profile in order to evade uh, any form of existing detection. And if I... Uh, Time, I will present how to, uh, to evade uh, data in a very special case when the attacker cannot control the IPsec uh, tunnel, but uh, however, make data evade. And I will conclude. So, the key security issue you have an internal system, and in fact, um, you, uh, most of the attack now evade uh, and exfiltrate data. It could be only a few bytes with credential, but uh, up to a huge database. And of course, depending on the environment, may it be connected or unconnected, um, the efficiency and the technical capability are different. For example, in air gap uh, attack, generally the, the rate and the um, transit speed are rather low. But when, uh, whenever you are connected to an environment, you can exfiltrate more data because you have a large bandwidth and, and so on. From the defender perspective, generally, you, can, you have to face, most of the time, automated an analysis, if any. But in some very particular cases, you have also to take into uh, consideration that the, uh, uh, your tools, malware, can be analyzed um, uh, in a very detailed way. So you have to take, uh, to take these two parts into account. So the, um, the context I am co uh, going to consider is a um, general, general at attack, weakly targeted, or on the contrary, strongly tar targeted data, what generally, commonly, we, we name uh, APT attack. In, the, in, the, in this later case, we consider that uh, um, reverse engineering debugging will always be in force. Uh, in this case, uh, today I will focus on connected environment, but it is fully uh, applicable to uh, air gap environment because I consider how to uh, manipulate data, not to, cre uh, not to create uh, a non-existent channel. And the primary focus is on uh, bypassing dete uh, automated detection. To be honest, at the present time, most automatic detection we have tested are uh, not very efficient. Uh, I will not cover the case we first create a, a, non a, a channel in the case, for example, um, co um, air gap attack. But if you want, uh, uh, you wish to have references, please contact me. I will, I will uh, send you references and previous work we did. So, the attacker has to uh, uh, evaluate the environment and have to, has to face uh, different uh, issues, technical issues. First, 
you can have uh, what we call generally DLP, data lake prevention tool. There are a few that are not very uh, efficient, but they can perform uh, keyword search, statistical profile, and so on. Um, if you encrypt, it means that you have to manage keys, but keys can be found, for example, when you reverse the malware. So how to use encryption uh, uh, dealing with this particular case. And the, to the extreme, uh, the attacker may uh, can evade data only through, uh, for example, IPsec channels, uh, IPsec VPN. So they, they do not control the cryptography, uh, but they have to cope with and to exploit data, however. It is possible, I will explain uh, how. Uh, how. For example, in military networks, we have um, done some successful tests. So the aim of the present point is not to develop attacks. I want to be clear, but um, I am convinced that the best way to defend is to understand how uh, attacks uh, can be conducted, uh, designed and uh, implemented. It's very important. So, um, and uh, the second um, approach is uh, it, if it works on paper, it must work uh, practically. So it is important to test, practically test and to, uh, to go to, uh, to the proof of concept. Uh, uh, soon, a um, technical paper will be available. Unfortunately, the, the code are not public for security reasons. But you have everything to, to, to implement by your own. What is important is the code, it is the theory and the concept. So, what is the state of the art? So, you have two approaches when you want to co um, protect communication. Uh, according to the NATO terminology, either you, prote you protect only the information, it is ComSec, communication security, but it is very easy to detect. Or you want also protect the channel. For example, if you uh, send encrypted data, we are going to see that it is very easy to detect. So uh, um, TransSec, transmission security, aims at protecting the fact that you're exchanging secret data. And of course, the most known techniques, it is not, the, not only the only one, it is steganography. So, of course, we, are, uh, we, we want to um, evade data in a very innocent looking way. So we have to consider both ComSec and TransSec uh, aspect. So, ComSec is cryptography. Cryptography is very strong, but whenever you exchange encrypted data, it is very easy to detect. You have here encrypted data on the, on the left. So, it is not easy to read. Uh, encryption means also using a secret key. So, you have secret key management uh, to take into account, which is rather difficult in practice. On the left, on the right, sorry, you have steganography. So, you take a cover, uh, it, it may be a, a, an image, a sound, a video, whatever you want. Um, you just take uh, your secret after encryption, you embed uh, uh, in the in the cover. Of course, the analysis the analysis of the cover with the secret must not reveal something different from any innocent looking image. And on the other end, uh, the the recipient adjusts to extract and decrypt the data. Uh, here. Also, you have a secret, secret key dependent algorithm, so with the same constraint uh, uh, regarding uh, key management. So, what about the, their respective security? On the left, how to detect uh, cryptography? You just have to take entropy profile. So, entropy is a very uh, strong uh, tool. Um, and you are able to categorize uh, the different kinds of data. For example, here you have the analysis of uh, uh, a binary code uh, whose uh, part is encrypted in the header. So, um, you have a peak of entropy. So, normal plain text data have an entropy profile per character of about four. If you consider compressed data, for example, packed data, in this case, um, the entropy will rise to up to six and encrypted data have maximal entropy of eight. So 
Whenever you analyze, uh, analyze data, you just uh, measure the entropy profile and you will detect cryptography uh, uh, every time. On the, on the right, you have steganography because you cannot embed secret data in any pixel or, uh, or uh, character. You have to choose carefully your character. So the number is very limited, up to square to the number, uh, square root of, the, uh, of n, where l is an eligible uh, coefficient. It means, in practice, that whenever you want to exfiltrate data with steganography, you cannot exceed 3% of the... Uh, usable coefficient. It means very low rate and very few quantity of data exfiltrated. It, it works perfectly, for example, to exfiltrate uh, a login password. But as soon as you want more data, it, it is not uh, tractable. So, what is malicious cryptography and mathematics? In fact, it is the art to try to combine the, the realm of attacks and the realm of mathematics and cryptography for their mutual benefit. And in fact, mathematics and cryptography means complexity. You have a lot of complexity, uh, complexity issue that you try to turn back against the defender. And especially, for example, combinatorics, which is a, a huge realm of uh, configuration uh, in, uh, you can use in order to uh, uh, hide and protect attack. So you can develop super malware, you can um, use malware to perform cryptanalysis. You can record in target environment. For example, a few years ago, we were able to design malware. We were able to determine on which kind of processor they were using some mathematical computation. And uh, uh, for target computers, they were able to activate or not. And the last, uh, the last part of my work is more dedicated to uh, encryption algorithm with trapdoor to, to, to prove that it is possible to embed uh, trapdoors, for example, in, in block ciphers. But if you, uh, at the end of the presentation, we will have a lot of re references to go further. So what about non-trivial deniable cryptography? So in fact, the main problem that the malware uh, that an attacker can use can be uh, analyzed. So, um, of course, the, the first uh, intuition is to use uh, encryption. But encryption means that during the ver reversing, you will have access to the key in a way or another. So, in fact, the solution is to use deniable cryptography. It means that you have one ciphertext, two keys, short keys, and you will produce, depending on the key, two uh, different plain text. And of course, you will, uh, the plain text will produce according to the condition. It was uh, until recently a, an open problem because only known cases were trivial. It means that you have two random sequences as long as a, as an encrypted part, and you saw, uh, saw, uh, saw them uh, uh, to the um, to the ciphertext. It is what we call we call uh, one type pad. Of course, it is not possible because you have a, a very long key, and the key must be in the code. So we have designed we have solved the problem using a deterministic algorithm with very short keys, up to. Uh, uh, 128 up to 250, uh, to, uh, 256. And depending on the condition from the same ciphertext, you will have uh, two different uh, plain text depending on the key you provide. But you, you still have two keys. So here you have the, the description of the security analysis. So you must not from the ciphertext guess the key. You must not uh, knowing one plain text find the other one and so on. There are a lot of applications, not only malware, but uh, code protection, uh, anti fluorescent techniques. We are currently developing um, security uh, uh, control uh, without database uh, in order to prevent um, data leak and so on. So I cannot do the demo, but after the presentation, if uh, a, few, uh, a few are interested, I can do uh, offline. So in fact, the principle in your context is following. The malware, which is not in, uh, the part which is not encrypted, is communicating through a complex 
protocol with time, with fingerprint and so on, with the CNC. And um, the, the malware is first determining whether it is under current analysis. It can be uh, DBI, uh, sandboxing, debugging, and so on. So it will send the information to the CNC. We will uh, send back a key. will um, enable the malware to decrypt as an innocent-looking malware or innocent-looking content, and then fully analyzed. But on the contrary, uh, may the environment be physical or virtual, but if the malware has a certainty, is sure that it is not currently under analysis, and once again, uh, he is considering a lot of environmental data, then the CNC will back the, the, the key that will activate the decrypt as a real attack. So in fact, for the analyst, most of the time, not to say always, he will, he will have the feeling that the malware is, is not a very dangerous or it is not a malware. Uh, so I will stress on, on the protocol we made, so there, there are fingerprint, uh, time index, time of fixation. It means that if you analyze the plain text part of the malware, you will not find any clue when to connect in order to have the right key. And so it will be what we call ephemeral and um, environmental um, uh, protocol. So let's go now into the core of the presentation. Most document, uh, 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 the problem is to exfiltrate data. So you can exfiltrate data uh, uh, in, a, in a raw format, but you can also look for a carrier. And the best carrier are um, most document formats. They have metadata. Metadata are quite never checked by DLPs or internals. So you have very complex, more, more and more complex internals in, in documents. So there are a lot of possibilities and that's why the best way to exfiltrate data is to take, to consider a normal communication uh, through innocent looking document, uh, rather to, uh, to, to, um, to, to build your own communication. Uh, of course, you can split into several documents. There are a lot of, uh, of possibilities. And it is also possible to do that, uh, for example, in Poland, they, they experiment with a network, network protocol metadata. So, a very lame, simple uh, example for illustration. You can, you can do it very simply. You, you have on the right, uh, on the left, a PDF document. I have just edited and inserted in plain text, of course, it is uh, in the reality, we will uh, mimic some other data. You have here the, uh, a, secret, uh, a, a, a secret message. You can open the PDF, it will work. There is no alert, no, no uh, format violation, uh, uh, anything. Uh, the document is, looks perfect. It is very, very interesting. You can do this in many, many, many uh, uh, document formats. So most of the time in big IT systems, um, there are um, automated analysis in place in, in IDS or DLPs. So they are looking for keywords and so on. So you have to um, make sure that nothing suspicious is currently uh, occurring. So first we use uh, encryption. But it is not really encryption in the common sense of, of the terms, but it is key dependent transformation. And this transformation must be as secure as ciphertext, but must not look as ciphertext. It is the, the key difference with the same, of course, level of security. Whenever you use the key, it means that it can be extracted during a, a reverse engineering step. How to prevent this? We use, so, key dependent transformation, so equivalent to encryption, but we, we just use uh, random keys. It is encrypt and forget. 
Of course, on the attacker's side, he must be able to decrypt, but he has time. So generally, we use random uh, keys from dev, uh, dev uh, random or equivalent, and our, our experiment show that uh, 40 bits are sufficient. Of course, you have to perform a two to the power 40 exhaustive, uh, exhaustive search, but this is not this is not difficult. It will take time, but it is not intractable. So, of course, you can uh, use more sophisticated approach with, for example, algorithm and backdoors. The general principle is the following: Imagine you want to exfiltrate some data, for example, PDF. And PDF have a very specific entropy and statistical profile. You can take a lot of PDF files and build your, what we call a statistical distribution. But you want that those PDF looks like text files. So in fact, you want to mimic some different uh, statistical uh, distribution. So it's very simple. You just build uh, intermediate pro uh, statistical profile, you combine them by joint distribution uh, profile, and at the end, your text, your data exfiltrated, would look like to the target distribution. Here, for example, text file. It's very simple, it is a bit complicated because you have to, to cope with the probability theory and the distribution theory, but it's not so, so difficult uh, uh, to the end. So, a very short example for illustration purpose uh, again. Imagine you want to exfiltrate the short message. This is a secret message in text, but you want to, mm, of course, uh, the transformation may be uh, uh, public during code analysis, but uh, I use two different uh, uh, distribution, text distribution, because if I, uh, for the presentation using a PDF distribution would be a, a bit, uh, uh, difficult to uh, to see. So, for example, here uh, I use a second order Markov di character distribution, and you have the text. And to extract your secret message, you must to have the secret key. But the automated analysis will see nothing by definition. And if you want to go to more to do more sophisticated, you can use first order Markov word distribution. It means that you, you are correcting what we call the zip flow, which is able to mm, compute the distribution of words. And then you are going to mimic English language in this case. It looks like language, uh, uh, English language. Of course, it means it doesn't mean anything, but from a statistical point of view, any DLP will say, okay, it's okay, it's normal communication with English, English text. It's, it works very well. So you can do a lot of things. You can change the language. You can go from English to French, for example, or any lang other language. You can change the format. So you can do a lot of things. Preventing this is very difficult. It would you, you could do, but for example, you could, you could perform transcoding, recording. Any communication, outbound communication, should be recorded and transcoded. Recorded means uh, in the same format, rec uh, transcoded in a, in a different format. Of course, you have computing, uh, you will have a, a big issue computing resources. It is impossible. At this time, no DLP, uh, to existing DLP tools are able to uh, uh, detect this. So, the last part deals with how to um, exfiltrate data when the attacker has to mandatorily go through an IPsec channel, which is the case for example, very sensitive networks, uh, for instance, military networks. Uh, in this environment, and my experience is more on, on military uh, networks, there are only very few routers and IP, IP uh, sec uh, tunnels were um, protected against this kind of attacks. I know only two, two devices, we forbid this. So it is an attack we have developed in 2008 and published in 2011. And recently I have updated it in order to just to see whether it, it was still working and the potential is still uh, 
uh, possible and it is, uh, it, it is possible to perform this attack for most of the uh, IPsec tunnels uh, existing. So just to recall what the tunnel mode and ESP uh, e uh, are so you have a part which is encrypted what is interesting in this case we are going to use as a cover channel the fact that the user data which are encrypted have a variable size so we are going to do to use the, the, the SMP method to ping in fact we are going to send packets and to cut the data to exfiltrate with the, 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 the payload length because you have no systematic padding so you are like Morse code, some sort of Morse code. So what's the principle? Alice and Bob communicate through a secure channel. And of course, malware is deployed inside Alice computers. And the attacker can only analyze a IPsec tunnel. He cannot do anything else. He does not control the IPsec channel. And of course, he wants to exfiltrate data but they, they will be encrypted and it doesn't control the key. So there are two methods, the very simple uh, uh, yet efficient one, the pinglets method, and we have um, uh, updated and optimized this by using error correcting codes. So in fact, we code data um, in terms of packet lengths payload lengths. So we, we build a one-to-one -one correspondence between data character to evade, we use base64, and ECMP, uh, ICMP packet size. The attacker looks for the packets and adjusts to extract the size. So he will decode depending on the number of packets uh, having a, a given size, he will decode the data. So we use, in this case, most of the experiment have used uh, five repetition codes. You repeat every uh, character uh, five times. The, uh, uh, the repetition codes are probably the most uh, powerful uh, codes at decoding. Of course, they are worse in terms of uh, bandwidth and exfiltration rate, but they are very uh, interesting for de uh, decoding without error. We use uh, begin and sub stacks. And so the last part is just implementation trick in order to, to take into account the IPsec standards. So here for, you have, a, uh, it is a, a map which has been updated this year to adapt to uh, new um, IPsec routers. Uh, so you, ha you have your correspondence between on the left the size of the uh, of the packets and uh, the character you want to code. So very simple in, uh, uh, in principle. So the attacker will uh, observe the, fl the the flow, extract the, the the packet size, and decode, because the packet size means a given character. But of course, randomly, some natural packet coming uh, coming from natural communication legitimate com communication may may have the same size this is the reason why we use repression code in order to um, to be able to decode and not to take it into account um, uh, normal packets so a few results uh, I try, uh, we try to exfiltrate uh, uh, simple sentences which could represent, for example, logging, logging and, and password. So, how, uh, salut, comment ça va aujourd'hui? Uh, hello, how, uh, how are you this day? And you have here, so you have, in fact, uh, the traffic load respects the time. And uh, de depending on different traffic, because it's very efficient, even for uh, a noisy traffic and heavily loaded traffic. So, here you have no residual error, it will take uh, 145 seconds in order to um, uh, exfiltrate. Here you have a continuous random load of one kilobyte per, per second, so uh, it takes a little bit more time. There are a bit, there are more error, but you can uh, use additional error correcting codes. They are not detected by IDS. Uh, with burst with random phase, so uh, still a few errors, but we are able to correct at the end. Uh, and 
with random burst. So we tried, in fact, with different kind of graphics in order to prove that even with um, non-optimal traffic, I mean, for example, heavily loaded traffic, it is still possible to evade data. It is possible to optimize. We are currently working on this. Um, you have to use more uh, tricks regarding with respect to error cutting codes. So here it is uh, another updated uh, map uh, this year uh, in order to adapt to some, some partial padding. Uh, and, and for, for example, bypassing some effect of the IPsec standard uh, with respect to fragmentation effect. So we have to reduce, you have to change your mapping, but once again, the principle remains the same. So I won't annoy you with a mathematical demonstration in order to be able to correctly identify and use the packet, the, the payload lengths, but uh, the repetition code proved that you are indeed able to get rid of the normal uh, packets having a given uh, payload size and ex consider only yours uh, extracted pa payloads. You can, of course, um, use um, a higher number of repetition it will be uh, the, low, uh, the higher the um, n will be, of course, the lower you will be your rate, but the residual decoding error will tend to zero uh, more efficiently. So you, you have to find some trade-off between the different parameters, depending on the context, the, band the, the bandwidth, and so on. Uh, it is, of course, here I have taken uh, the ICMP protocol, but we have uh, observed that uh, for many other cases, like DNS request, uh, HTTP request, TTL op limit, it is possible also to code information. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm convinced that there are a huge potential um, uh, with these uh, protocols. In terms of detection, I think it's impossible with IDS. It is precisely the interest of mathematics to create so much complexity that on the different side, he cannot cope with this complexity. He cannot look for all the possible patterns, all possible streams, all the time frame uh, bigger and bigger. So very soon you will be able to, extra, to, to bypass any detection technique just by creating more and more combinatorial complexity. It is precisely the interest of mathematics and cryptography to, uh, to, to work with huge uh, sets. You can, of course, we are uh, currently uh, working with also adaptive methods. So the malware will uh, adapt to the environment, to the bandwidth, to the network uh, nature or behavior, just to mimic more and more, uh, closer and closer to the current uh, network behavior. Once again, it is just a statistical simulation, so nothing mm, uh, complex. Uh, in, uh, so to conclude, at the present time, in 2021, it is still very easy, too easy to extract data. And most commercial tools are not able to detect anything except very lame and basic techniques, which is rather worrying. So that's the reason, for example, in defense, we try to, 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 secure, to secure, to not to connect to, and to take, I would say, um, organizational measure process because we know that whenever uh, a connection is available, it is quite impossible to detect anything. So it was uh, uh, the, uh, the intent of this presentation was also to, to, to show the huge potential of malicious mathematics. And I'm convinced we are only at the beginning. There are a lot of things, and it's, very, it's a pity that there are not so many research in this area. So if you, have a, you are interested, yeah, there is a lot to do. And once again, the only solution uh, I see would be to systematically record and transcode any outbound traffic. Of course, it is not possible, but at the present time, it is the only solution, technical solution we have, uh, we have in mind. So thank you for your attention. And uh, you will find 
different uh, references in order to to support the presentation. I strongly advise you, for example, uh, the paper from Primo and David, we explain how to systematically for a malware or a code detect whether it is currently analyzed. It's a very interesting paper. Thank you. All right. Thank you. You have question? When dealing with mathematics, people are still afraid at the end. So, sorry. So, thank you very much. Uh, sorry. And we, yeah. uh, can you repeat because uh, uh, yeah, so it paints a pretty grim picture. Like basically, you're saying we don't have a way of detecting these uh, malwares using these techniques. Mm. Is that correct? Yes. In fact, um, you have the exfiltration techniques, and you have the malware which um, implement these techniques. So you have two points. As soon as you have a malware uh, which successfully is in the system and remain undetected, you will be able to exfiltrate data. That's the reason why there was a part devoted to how to protect the malware uh, uh, against analysis. Because you have two parts. You have first to deploy a malware, especially, for example, in an air gap environment. And you have to keep in mind that it can be uh, analyzed. So just to hide not to forbid the analysis, but to hide the actual uh, action of the malware, just to say, oh, I was doing anything else. Though, uh, it, there are two parts. The first part, you are right, is the malware deployment, which is not really the, the, the focus of this presentation, except how to protect it with malicious cryptography and enable cryptography. But once in the system, you will be able to extract data very easy. Thank you. You can contact me if you need, uh, uh, want more references or see if, if you have technical questions. Thank you very much again.